Bush. And joining me now is South Carolina Republican State Senator Sandy Sen. She was one of the three Republicans who blocked her state's near total abortion ban. Uh, Senator, thank you very much for being with us. I, I heard your words there a moment ago uh, on the floor, and, and they were powerful. This, this is about control. It's about men saying that they can take care of women or they should be in charge of taking care of women, I guess. Explain what, what they're thinking, what you believe they're thinking. You know, a lot of them, I think, honestly, do believe that they we need them. I mean, they said that even a young senator who was just elected and he's in his 40s, I would assume his wife is young. So they, that's still childbearing age. But he believes that um, we he needed to protect young women from their doctors. And he really, you know, went after the doctors and wanting to criminalize them. So I can tell you why they think that way. I can tell you this, that most of them who vote this way don't believe it. And they're getting an earful from their wives and from their daughters who think that their views are just obtuse and they're only voting that way to pander to what they think is the most popular side of the base. And it just is not. And I agree with the senator from Nebraska, uh, or was a representative who sat there and, and didn't vote because he thought that it's going to things are going to turn on him. In South Carolina, women are 51 percent of the vote. And to sit there and try and tell us that we need them to make these laws and, and the law, what they were trying to pass was zero abortion. And many in the House wanted no exceptions. Uh, yeah, they did end up putting some exceptions in there, but um, basically, nobody would be able to get an abortion unless they could prove rape. The sheriff would have to go investigate whether there was a rape. It's just a ridiculously oppressive bill. So, you know, your your colleague also said, and we played this, women don't have sex just to get an abortion. And it feels like a lot of this debate, that's, that's what these lawmakers who are pushing these laws are insinuating, that a woman is just loose and she's going out and she's promiscuous and she's doing all those things. And then she's going and showing up the next day at the abortion clinic or a few weeks later and just getting rid of it. Like it's no big deal, right. but it happens all the time. The numbers oh, obviously yeah. disappear prove that. But also, you talk about them having women in their lives who are pushing back. I wonder, I wonder still, with all of the women in their lives pushing back and the numbers showing that it's a losing political issue, why this keeps getting pushed? You know, it's to pander to the base. And if you look at the Republican creed, which is what I go by, um, there's nothing in there that is a social issue. Uh, you know, I'm I'm very fiscally conservative, but I don't like the pushing of social issues. And this one in particular has been pushed three times in six months. They knew what the outcome was going to be. We all knew what the outcome was going to be. And yet we had to stand up and filibuster yet again. So this time I was very tough with my words. I told them before they did it that if they made us go down this road a third time, that basically they were going to get an earful. And they did. And now they're smarting about it. And my leader even told our local news that uh, he would have an answer for me in 2024. So in other words, he's going to, I guess, five women in the Senate are too many. I guess he's going to come <laughs> after this one because I was really tough on him. But he should not have led us down this path again. So let's ask about 2024, because you only beat your opponent, I believe, by two points, a Democratic opponent. Uh, you represent Charleston. Uh, are you worried that um, I know you've been clear about your position, but the position of the Republican Party is going to be a drag on your race? No, not really. We um, we've already redistricted. So my, my I won really in a blue district. So, yeah, I, I had crossover for sure. Um, but, and you know, I know that a lot of Dems did cross over and vote for me. But as far as now, we've got a whole new district. Um, I've been in office seven years. I'm not in it. You know, I, I believe in term limits. I'm not. This isn't my life. I have a job, I have family, um, but, you know, I'm not going to vote in a way that's going to oppress women simply because the party might want me to pander to them. Um, the people that came up with the 
you know, the platform. These are just the people that go to these events like year after year after year. And this is both sides. So you've got hard right, hard left people who come up with these, um, the, you know, the party platforms. And you're not going to I'm not going to agree with everything on the party platform, this being one of them. And I think that this is an issue, really, that the people in my area are sick of. It has been polled. My Even my leader has polled it. Uh, Seventy percent of Republican voters in my area would agree with me. And I stand at first trimester, um, you know, so I'm not ridiculous either way, uh, zero or full out, <laughs> you know, until you get birth. But you can't get, we couldn't get our five Supreme Court justices to agree. They all wrote separate opinions. Mm. You're not ever going to be able to get the full legislature to agree. So it needs to go on a ballot and they refuse because they know they will lose. We put up the polling there in South Carolina to show you how South Carolinians feel as well. Um, State Senator Sen, thank you very much for being here. Republican from South Carolina. We appreciate it.